Today is the 16th of December, the day that will never be forgotten in the lives of any person who has children, any human being who has a heart, and anyone who would want to see their children grow up to be successful people, to see them uh, grow in front of them. In this day will never be forgotten because 144 young beautiful children who went to school were targeted by filthy disgusting terrorists and they were slaughtered for hours in the army public school attack in Peshawar. I'll share uh, some stories that I saw with my own eyes uh, because they are very important. I was in Lahore when uh, we heard about this attack and I went straight from Lahore to Peshawar, stayed in Peshawar for four days and went day in day out uh, to see, to meet, to find out what happened. When I got there, the pictures that were shown in grey uh, and were not for public view. I went in that auditorium in that school at least four times and saw this blood spread across the auditorium at least four times. And I could imagine what would have gone through with an auditorium filled up with children, with laboratories filled with classes and students and what would have they felt when they heard explosions and gunfires. I went to the hospital where many, many children after the attack were taken to. I'll share some stories with you on that experience that I had in these four days in Peshawar on December 16th. When I went into the school, I went to all the classes, I went to the auditorium, I went to the principal's room and all I saw there was blood. Blood under the seats, blood on the stage, blood on the walls. And what I was told was that there was an event going on when the attack happened and the principal of the school and even a few teachers, when they heard explosions and when they heard gunshots, they used the first door right next to the stage to take the children out. And even when they had the chance to get, to save themselves and get out from there, many teachers, including the principal herself, took up this responsibility that she would save all the children before ensuring that she gets out safe from the premises. And that resulted in them being shot dead as well. I went on the main assembly area uh, where the children gather. I went into the laboratory where class 9 students were uh, were doing their activities when they were attacked. But what I could not understand was how did this happen? How could this kind of devastation happen for such a long period of time? That's why I went to the hospital. And when I went to the hospital, I met many children. Every single one of them had a story of their own. One child I met was from class 9th. He uh, was shot six times. And I believe to a great extent that that little boy was a hero because he would have saved many, many children who were there in the auditorium because he was the one who heard the gunfires, 
who saw it out. He was sitting right at the edge of the auditorium, opposite to the stage at the corner. And he saw it from the window, from the door's window, because when he heard the gunfire and the explosions, like every other student, he started running as well. And he went on to the back door. When he went there, he saw that that the terrorists were coming from there. So what he did was he locked that room so that they could not enter. And then he started running downwards. It took, as the child told me, it took at least 30 to 40 seconds for the terrorists to break the door open. But then they started shooting. Till that time, this child had run from the top of the auditorium down at least halfway through because it was crowded and he was trying to run away. He heard gunfires in the auditorium behind his back. The first bullet hit his leg. The second bullet hit his thigh. The third bullet hit his thigh. The fourth bullet uh, hit his abdomen and he fell right at the stairs of the stage from where you go up on the stage. He crawled his way up and he crawled his way up and that was the time when he got shot twice in the stomach area and he fell and he said when I fell I could feel other children falling on me. Majority of them were dead. I asked him on how he was able to get out of there because they were inside. He said they came from the back door. They came from the side doors from the front side as well. So what he said that I played dead. He played dead because he had dead children on top of him. Blood of who was falling on his face. And he said, I stopped my breath and I acted as if I died too. Then he said that he felt that there was someone from the terrorist who came and who kept checking the children with his gun to make sure that if there is someone who's left alive, he or she should be shot dead too. And he said that he even uh, saw him checking and even if out of suspicion that the, the terrorist felt that that child was alive, he shot him in the head. But he played dead and that is how he managed later to get out from there and get to the hospital. When this attack happened, the auditorium was the place where the massive, major uh, killings were done. Because as per the drill that was taught to the children, whenever there is an emergency situation, what they would do is they would go under uh, their seats, head down, and will stay there. And that's exactly what the children did initially. And that's what also gave the terrorists chances to, to go lane by lane and shoot the children. That is why there was blood everywhere, every other, every single corner of that particular auditorium of the Army Public School in Peshawar. One other child I met, he couldn't speak, but his brother was there. And he said that when the attack happened, he was in the laboratory. And when he heard the noises, they went out and one of them was able to go into the administration room from where he called his parents. 
Mary uh, told him that there has been an attack. His brother told me that they rushed to the to the school, but because the army was already deployed outside, they they were told to stay as far away as possible because they could also come in the line of fire. That child also got shot eight times. Alhamdulillah is alive today. Both of these children are alive. But they're disabled for life. There was a child whose mother was a teacher. A mother of two children studying in the same school. One of the children was able to get out because he was one of the front seats in the auditorium and he was among the first to get out from there safely but the other one was in his class and he missed a bullet which hit his head brushed his head and went away his mother was shot dead when the APA school opened I was there also and uh, they were going to school. Their father was taking them to school in the morning. They stopped to speak to me. I saw in their car that the father was driving the car. Both the sons were sitting at the back seat, while the passenger seat right next to the, to the father was empty. I asked him, why haven't you sat in the front? And he said, that's where my mother used to sit. It is going to stay empty as long as they are there. He said that this is the first time in their life that they've had to wake up on their own. They've had to iron their uniforms. They have to get ready for school without their mother being there to help them and assist them. In the army public school, in the assembly ground, there was a memorial with pictures of all the children, 144, who were martyred. Their pictures were there. When the army public school attack happened, there were funerals. There was, the funeral started from early morning till late at night. And I was trying to go to each and every one. I was trying to gather the courage to, to be able to go up to their family members, to be able to go up to the children who were, uh, who survived. Because it was part of my job to hear their stories. I remember I attended a funeral in which the young boy's father told me that he's got three sons more and they are also going to the same school. He said that his son is a martyr, a boy who went to school to study, not to die, a boy who wanted to be an army soldier in his future, a boy who was a beautiful one, active, sharp, smart intelligent, a beloved son, a beloved brother. And he said that this fight will not stop. And this was a statement that was given by many, many of the funerals that I attended during my four days stay in Mishawa. In my four days, I slept about four hours only because I couldn't sleep. I was devastated. I was heartbroken. I couldn't have that anymore. But I also knew that I couldn't run away from this. This is a reality that I have to know. I have to face. I have to understand. Because losing a beloved son, a beloved daughter, anyone who you love the most, and then having the courage 
to bury their body and then come up and say that we will fight these people. It's not easy. And I saw that in those people, in those families. I've never seen people more courageous than those people. Those children who survived went back to the same school. The brother uh, of a boy who was shot dead, he said, I might never have the courage to go back to the same school again. But yet he went, he gathered the courage to go back because everyone said that what has happened is terrorism and they will stand against it. There's a slogan of Army Public School. We shall rise again. And that stands tall as a feather on the shoulder of every single person, every single family member, every single student who sacrificed their life, every single teacher, the principal who showed the courage to give priority to the other children more than their own lives, that mother who lost her life but was able to save her two sons. This slogan, we shall rise again, definitely speaks volumes and slaps on the faces of all those terrorists who took children as their target to show their strength and power. 16 December, changed lives of many, including mine. And because I was reporting for the foreign media news networks, I know what my channels and their owners asked me to do. They did not tell me to go and do journalism. They said, you go and bring us stories. Bring us stories from the families because every mother, every father, sitting anywhere in the world wants to hear them because they feel the pain equally the way those families, those parents are feeling. I don't think anyone in my country, Pakistan or anywhere in the world did not have tears in their eyes hearing what happened. Today, it's been years to that incident, yet when this come, this day comes, it brings nothing but memories, at least to someone like me who had this experience. And I, I cannot explain in words what I went through. I felt as if I had lost my own son. I felt as if I had lost my own beloved family member. And I still feel the same way. I'll still say it out loud that all of those children, those beautiful, beautiful children who went to school were no less than sons to me, were no less than daughters to me. And they'll always be that way. Because probably that event changed my perception. That event not only changed my perception day, it changed my life. It changed the life of the whole nation, the whole country, Pakistan, who took this issue up at heart and went all out against these filthy terrorists. Pakistan is a nation known for culture, a nation known for love. Yet these terrorists continue to damage us, to break our hearts, try to weaken us. Let's be strong. Let's be strong in the name of those children who laid their lives during this attack. Let's have courage to stand up against these bloody terrorists in the name of all those who survived and continued to go back to the same school Let's have hopes and courage from those young children who I met when the school reopened and they said they are going to be an army officer, they're going to fight against them. Many said they're going to be doctors because they saw their 
friends and colleagues and fellow students filled with blood in that school that day. Let's not forget them ever. And let's share that slogan. We shall rise again. We definitely shall and will. And with those 144 students and all those who survived that attack, we as a nation, as a human being, we would stand by them, we would raise this slogan, we would make Pakistan a safer place because we might be breathing today, but where as long as these terrorists are here, this day, this moment might even be my last. Do not forget December 16. Do not forget those children. Be proud of them. Their parents are proud. You should be too.